Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our intergenerational conversation. We are here at the Cathedral International in Berthamboy. We are excited to share this conversation with you on some of our members and leaders uh, from the multiple generations. So we're going to start here, and we're all going to introduce ourselves, and then we'll jump right into the questions. Uh, hello, my name is Colin Chester. I am 15 years old, and I am a part of Generation Z. My name is Erin Gabrielle Edwards. I am 29 years old, and I am a millennial. I am Pastor Amir Ballard, and I am part of Generation X. Hello, everyone. My name is Elder Doretha Sims. I am Baby Boomer Generation, and welcome. So, Elder, I believe you're going to start with the questions that we'll ask to the younger generation. So, if you can sign us off. Yes. Uh, to Zeke, they call you? Uh, yes. Yes. Zeke, what do you miss about having in-person church? How are you able to feel the presence of the Lord from your home? Well, a lot of, at least to me personally, a lot of the church experience is not only experience in the uh, cathedral, mm -hmm. but it's also something that you feel within yourself. So, I mean, okay. um, I, I'm trying to remember, I believe it's a quote or something like that, but your church, you can worship wherever you are, meaning okay. that you are essentially your church. Sure, being with other people definitely helps, but it's just something that you feel personally for yourself. Of course, one thing that I do miss is being able to see all of the friends because I've known some of these people for my entire life. Yes. So um, at least only texting them and not being able to see them in person, it, it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's still, we should still look at the bright side of things. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I feel Cathedral is my second family. So not being able to see people who have prayed for me and who have watched me grow up and graduate high school and graduate college, um, that sense of community is always a part of you. Um, and if you've had it for so many years and then having it to stop, it's like, how do you cope, right? And you learn a lot of your coping with the church, and that's what even my family's generations before me know that church is coping. Um, so having to celebrate in your home and worship in your home um, was a, a change, but also a new way of finding God and finding your faith throughout all of everything that was going on. Amen. Amen. I think um, something that resonates with me in that question, I think is similar, at least to what you all have shared is this idea of community, and you sort of named that, Aaron, uh, missing the community, missing seeing people. And I think it's best to exemplify when we have had our drive-through events, e either from Christmas to things that, we, that we've had recently, you can see that people really miss seeing each other and being in each other's presence. And I think it speaks to this whole idea of community. And I think really what Jesus is pushing us to is, is developing a community of believers. So that's definitely something I really miss as well. Amen. But Zeke said something. Uh, I miss uh, in-person church. I, I really do. I like the drums. I like the piano. I like the uh, bishop saying amen. But Be uh, Zeke said something. He said he had to learn or we have to learn the church is more than the building. And, and it was reminded to Doretha that the church, I am the church. I just come to the building to have church with my brothers and sisters. So thank you. And thank you, Aaron, And thank everyone. Amen. To know that we not only need the building, but we need each other. We're living in the last days where we need each other. I need to hear the mother, and which I am a part of the mothers. I need to hear hear that old song. I need to hear that testimony. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so this is a question to the older generation. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think the old school church members thought technology was the devil and compared to how you feel about technology now? 
please. Um, I think when we say why did the, um, when technology became popular, why did some generations believe it was not of God? And, and, I, and I frame it that way uh, because I think the issue that we find, I'm also a history teacher just for context. So I think what we find is that when people don't understand something, they tend to vilify it. Amen. And so if they don't understand it, if they don't have a, a knowledge or understanding of where it, come from, where it comes from and how it functions, they have a tendency to vilify what they don't understand, which, which itself is problematic, but it's something that historically mankind and humankind has done. And so when technology comes along, everything from when drums were brought into the church or when you know, new instruments were brought into the church, for those who were established uh, and didn't understand how it fit, it was so outside of their ordinary that the tendency was to vilify it, um, which I think is, that's problematic because our understanding of God is that God knew about the technology before we did. And so we have to sort of keep that in mind. And also, I think another key for us to remember is that it's not the technology itself, but how it's used, right? So something, the Bible has been used for evil, just like we know the Bible should be used for good. And so it's not the tool that's the problem. It's how we use the tool. I totally agree. I'm from that uh, baby boomer old generation and where I did it or what our pastor said, when they didn't understand, they thought the church had to be just a certain way. And when God decided that he wants to change, they couldn't embrace it. And so when I came here from uh, old school Pentecostal, things were different. So I had to pray to the Lord, Lord, help me to adapt to change. Change is good. We, life is changing. We, we change from an old car to a new car. You know, the Model T Ford, which y'all don't know nothing about. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to a car now that uh, some cars you can just, what, hit a button? The car not only comes out of a parking spot, but it drives, it can drive, change lanes for you. So we have to be, especially older people, myself included, we have to adapt to change to know that God move. his message is always gonna be the same. It's always gonna be the same. And just because uh, technology come into play, it's a good thing, amen. If we didn't have technology now, we wouldn't have church. We wouldn't have the new phones. We wouldn't have a new, uh, the new uh, airplane. So I agree. They weren't ready to change. Sometimes people aren't ready to change. They want to stay. It has to be the devil. It can't be the Lord. But the Lord is always about change, newness. And I, th I think to, to add one more thing, whenever I think of technology, my de definition of it is always something that is meant to make life easier. Easier. Mm -hmm. Right? And so... A lot of times in teaching my students, whenever I, I talk about technology, they always go to electronics. I said, but you know, when the wheel was first created, that was technology. When irrigation was first created, that was technology. It was anything that, that's meant to make life easier. And I, and, I, and I echo Elder Woods, you know, um, where would we be if we didn't have Zoom? Like, pandemic hit, <laughs> we had Zoom, and we were like, okay, let's roll with it. Well, you know, and, and, so, and so again, technology is, is about how do we use it how to use it. Amen.